Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, it's a rainy season, right? How many of you like rainy season? A very few, and I am one of them. I love rainy season when it is raining or kind of gloomy and dark. A lot of people don't like. It's kind of depressing for them. But for me, it's really something. Uh, I feel like happy, hopeful. So whenever I have that kind of weather, it's heaven for me. Uh, today, I'm going to speak about the importance of balance in life. But before that, continuing my talk on the weather, it was two weeks ago, the Korean Meteorology Office gave some announcement about uh, or warning about the heat wave. Now it's rainy season, a little bit cold, but still humid and sticky. But regardless of the weather, the hot weather, the heat, a lot of people like summer. You know why? It's because of different kinds of activities. How many of you like summer? Yes, especially the little ones, because they love water sport. Going to beach or doing different kinds of activities. Especially water sport. Different kinds of outdoor activities are there in summer. The last two or three years, we didn't do that because of COVID-19, but thanks to God, now everything is recovering back. Some of the sports are very extreme sports. Extreme sports, also known as action sports or alternative sports. This is a kind of sport or event characterized by high speed and high risk. Two things, at least. They are very fast, and at the same time, they are very risky. But a lot of people really enjoy doing that. You see here, this man doing the bike. I brought some examples here. One is skydiving. This is one of the hugely popular extreme sports people love to do, especially during summertime when the weather is very clear. In this sport, skydivers, they jump out of an airplane mid-flight. Do you have the courage to do that? To be honest, I'm not. <laughs> I can't do that, it's very scary. But people do that. In fact, here you can see two people doing that. Definitely one, at least one is a professional skydiver. Then they use a parachute to land safely on the ground and this sport definitely it requires keeping your balance and you need to have experience it's not for everyone and another one here is barefoot skiing there's no board this man you see him behind 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 no board barefoot this is water skiing without skis it involves a lot of strength and endurance as you can see the skier needs to achieve perfect balance again. There is a, uh, the participant's weight and the speed of the pulling moving vehicle are calculated, but still the man who is doing, or the person who is doing this uh, sport needs to keep the balance. If he or she does not know how to keep the body balance, it doesn't work. Everything will be calculated and then they keep the balance and they enjoy. Another one, windsurfing. This is windsurf uh, windsurfers use a long board, and then the board is powered by the wind with the sail attached to it, as you can see here on the picture. And advanced windsurfers can, can, can perform different kinds of tricks and moves, like jumps, spinning tricks, and loops on the water. It's very much interesting. Every one of us maybe wanted to try this one, but again, you need to keep your balance here. You need to be brave. There are more sports here. Waterfall kayaking, this is, wow. Do you want to try this one? Oh, some brave kids here, good. 
This is one of the scariest and extreme sports that we know. This is kind of traveling in a kayak through waterfall. Often at the valley steep high, very high, and through extremely fast current. Two things they have to do. One, they have to push up and land. The landing needs to be at the nose of the kayak. That is balance. If you cannot do that, and some of you, you see how high it is? Really very scary. Bungee jump. And how many of you tried bungee jump when you went to Lotte World? Okay, yeah. This is um, jumping from a great high height or cliff while connected to a large elastic uh, cord. And the launching is erected, usually erected on the uh, top of a structure. It could be building or a bridge or maybe a natural cliff on a mountain then you will be dropped, you will jump down uh, this uh, elastic cord tied on your body. Still very scary. And the last one here, tight rope walking. It requires the skill of walking along a thin wire or a rope. People are walking on that. Some of the people, they try without any protection measure. It has long tradition in various countries and is commonly associated with uh, a sport called circus. Balance and long-lasting practice is essential for this sport. You see how balance in all the extreme sports that I have mentioned is very much important, keeping balance. It's a common factor for all of them. Not only the sports that I have mentioned here, in fact, for many sports, kickbox or anything, balance is very much important. In fact, here, balance is equivalent to the athlete's safety. The consequence of losing your balance could be fatal or maybe significant damage, physical damage on the body of the athlete. What does the Bible say about keeping balance in our life? As much as balance is very much important in the physical world, in the extreme sports that I have mentioned, it is also very much important in our life. And this is not the physical balance, but this is in our mind, in our desires, in our choice, in our emotion, in our personality. We need that. There are so many biblical verses that we can read related to balance in life. But I only brought one from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5. If you are ready, let's read it together. The verse 1, 2, 3. But you be self-controlled in all things. Bear hardship patiently. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. In, in one verse, Apostle Paul gave lots of exhortation for Timothy especially related to keeping balance or be self-controlled. I read some ancient uh, translations, and literally the ancient translation that says be self-controlled here is translated as keep the balance in your life. Paul is a very wise man, and he knows what Timothy needed in order to fulfill the mission given by Jesus Christ to him. Without this self-control, it is not possible to, for Timothy to fulfill his ministry. In fact, not only for Timothy, everyone who have a mission from God, including you and me, we all need self-control so that we may be successful in a particular mission that we are engaged. Self-control is one of the fruit of the Spirit mentioned in the book of Galatia, chapter 5. There are nine. The last is self-control. And I would say probably the most difficult one too. Most people lack it one way or the other. There are areas that people are weak in order to control themselves. What is the exhortation Paul is giving to Timothy in the very verse that we read? 
there are three exhortations. The first one is endure. Please, all of you say endure. endure. What are we going to endure? Afflictions, troubles, trials, challenges. Uh, sometimes we need to discern what to endure in our life and what to resist in our life. Some of the things that God wants us to endure, we don't need to resist them. Rather, we need to endure in prayer and hard work. And some of the things that we can easily resist and avoid in our life, we don't need to endure them. Then we need the skill of discerning them. What are some of the things that I needed to endure and what are some of the things that I needed to resist? Then once we recognize them, those God already have given us to endure, we pray before God and give a lot of effort to endure them. Life requires endurance and consistency. For example, when Jesus said, not only Jesus, Apostle Paul and other uh, apostles also told us to pray continually. The Bible says, pray always, pray continually, right? And I don't think that refers to the duration of time that we spend, the long period or time that we spend in our prayer. Rather, it is about consistency. The continuity of prayer requires Christians to be consistent in our prayer life. Endurance is another quality in our prayer life. Afflictions are inevitable in life. If you are a human being, and stay here on earth, afflictions are inevitable. Then what do we do? If they are dimensions of life, we endure them until God removes from our life. The second one is do. The first one was endure. The second one is do. Do what? Do the work. Everybody has a work given from God. Everybody has a work given from people, from parents, teachers, the government, the society, and also self-appointed works. In order to fulfill that, we need to do the work. Do the work of the kingdom with faithfulness and commitment. Commitment and passion needed to, to, to do the work given. Christianity is a practical religion. It's not all about theory. It's not all, all about sermon. It is a practical religion. It demands its followers to have action. In fact, we say action, practicality, is a dimension of our faith. One dimension. And the third one is fulfill. I say here, all work that has started may not be completed. As you know, athletes, runners, like in hundreds, they start marathon, but some of them do not complete. And rewards are provided not for those who started the marathon, only for those who completed. We need to fulfill the job given. We need to fulfill the commitment that we have. We need to have determination to complete the work. Jesus said, one of the, one of the, the, the things Jesus said on the cross is, it is finished. You remember, right? He said seven things, seven sentences he spoke on the cross. And one is, it is finished. This is a big quality for a person to say, the work is finished. The study is completed. The mission is accomplished. Mission accomplished, which is a very beautiful term. And Paul said this, I have finished the race. These are two great people that we know who, who, who said something about fulfilling their mission. Now the question is, what do we say? Since we are still on the run, we may not say now it is finished. We're still very young. Probably we may say it has started. But as much as the beginning is important, the completion is also very much important. But there are some forces that hinder Christians from fulfilling our commitment. And I brought five of them. Number one, let's all read it. Number one, fear. Number two, unbelief. Number three, the love of the world. Number four, discouragement. Number five, sin. 
Fear comes from every place. For example, fear of man. When we are afraid of people, we may be hesitant to complete the mission given from God. Satan, the worldly laws, and sometimes doubt comes in control people. No one can say that I am free of doubt in life. Sometimes some bigotry comes. The law of the world is like the power of money, fame, and those kind of things. Discouragement and harsh criticism coming from others. And the last one, sin. In fact, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, sin has the power to entangle people. These all are hindrances that will hold us back from fulfilling our mission, from completing the, the job given to us, from enduring the hardness of the work. In conclusion, as balance is necessity in extreme sports, self-control is also essential for Christians. We need to learn how to maintain balance in all aspects of our life. Logic and emotion. Balance is needed to, for personal growth and also for our spiritual well-beingness. A person who wants to be spiritual needed to know how to control the self. Let us pray.